Back again for 2023 is the F-150 Tremor. The one in behind me is in Oxford white. It's got the 402A package, upgraded 18 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system, which sounds incredible. And it also does have the panoramic sunroof. There are some small changes to the F-150 looking at 22 to 23. The big one for the Tremor is that we no longer have the option for the entry level 400A package. So we're strictly looking at the 401 or the 402A packages inside of this truck. Outside of that though, 22 to 23 Tremor, pretty much identical. So this one is, as I mentioned, in the Oxford white, but one thing I love about the Tremor, all of the small highlights, like we've got these incredible side steps inside of this truck, which look fantastic. We've got our F-150 Tremor logo right along the driver passenger door there as well. And it's got this beautiful orange highlight that follows all the way throughout the vehicle on the inside, back, etc. It looks really, really sharp. So the Tremor wheels are really nice. I love the way that these things look. But we do have 18 inch wheels inside of this thing and these beefy grabber all-terrain tires. Really useful if you're gonna be taking this thing off road. And that's kind of why you're looking at the Tremor package, right? It's because you're wanting to take this thing off-road. If off-road isn't really your thing, you could look at either the XLT or the Lariat and then get the FX4 package instead. But, I mean, we've got a ton of benefits looking at this specific package. So, like, as we look at the suspension, we do have off-road shocks. There's a front stabilizer bar, unique control arms, front knuckles on top of that. And then we do also have the option for a front torsion differential inside of this thing. That's obviously going to be added at time of ordering from the factory, or if you're handy, have a mechanic that can do it, you could always add it in aftermarket. So this is like a huge step above the FX4 package. We've got these great looking hood scoops, and then even the orange that we saw along the door. So that Tremor badge follows through. So we've got this nice highlight throughout the grill. We've got two front painted tow hooks that are also orange so it just makes it stand out and pop that little bit more but the overall styling of the tremor grill is great and then very similar to what we saw inside of the wheel we also do have our blacked out ford badge right in the grill and then there is the front facing camera so we've got our front facing cameras side view mounted cameras and our backup camera this bad boy does have a 360 camera that's available and that's pretty much the same story across the board for the F-150. You will find that 360 camera available optionally, pretty much every trim, which is useful if you're planning on taking it off-road, you're towing, getting in and out of tight spaces, things like that. But we do have our front sensing system on top of that, and then our bash plates. So very, very useful if you're gonna be taking this thing off-road. So we've got our underbody protection in the front and then underneath just transfer case and a few other spots. And then for our lighting, we do have our LED headlamps and our fogs, and we can also turn them on using those zone lighting controls through that Sync 4 media screen. Oh. Underneath the hood of the Tremor, ugh, oh, on hydraulics, which is great, but we've got two different engine choices that are available. And the engine that you get as a default is going to depend on if you're in Canada or the States. In Canada, our default engine is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Down in the States, your default engine is going to be the 5 liter V8 instead. But one cool thing is that we do have the option of going for either choice, whether you're in Canada or the States. It's just that our default engine is different north of the border, here or there. But power-wise, that 5 liter is going to push out 400 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque versus the EcoBoost is going to push out 400 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. So we've got more launch torque, which is gonna be useful if you're towing. Having said that, you'll typically get slightly better fuel economy with that five liter Coyote. So it's gonna depend on what you need out of the vehicle. A turbocharged engine means that we've got one more thing that we need to worry about maintaining in comparison to the five liter V8. But I mean, either way, it is nice underneath here. We do have a little engine cover there with Ford and then EcoBoost on both sides. We can easily top up fluids if we want to. We've got access to the battery. Checking and changing our oil, a little bit more challenging. You can do it. It's just a little bit tricky to get there unless you've got something you can use in order to prop yourself up. But one big thing, you just wanna make sure you're performing regular oil changes and then regularly scheduled maintenance for a few different reasons. One of the big ones, you wanna make sure you're getting the best possible life out of your vehicle. 
but you're also maintaining the manufacturer's warranty. So just a minimum, make sure that you're taking care of your vehicle from oil changes, but you do also want to make sure regularly scheduled maintenance is being done all at the same time. The F-150 is a fairly big truck. It's like I'm six feet tall and I can't see over top of it. And that's where having these side steps comes into play. Like I love the ones that come in the tremor. These things just look so, so nice. But I mean, realistically, like getting in and out of this thing, it's not challenging at all. Like obviously because there's a side step, but <laughs> even if I didn't use that, it wouldn't be tricky for the first or for the second row. <laughs> not impossible as I like struggle in order to get in and out of the truck. Not impossible, but I mean, the, having the side step there is really, really helpful at the same time. Now, a few other highlights to point out. We do have our side view mirrors that have a little camera there, blind spot monitoring system. We also do have our five digit number pad on the side, so we can push this if we want to be able to lock the door. And then we also have intelligent access. So as long as we've got the key fob on us, if the door is locked, we just slide our hands in in order to be able to open this thing up. It's really straightforward. Filling up fuel inside of the F-150, also straightforward. So along our driver's side, we've got a capless system. So just insert, fill up, and you're good to go. If you're using a jerry can, use the white spigot. Just pop that in first before you insert your jerry can. Super straightforward. Looking at fuel quality, regular 87 is all you need to use inside of these vehicles. That's minimum manufacturer's recommendation. You could technically use a 91 if you wanted to get the best possible performance out of the vehicle, but it's not necessary. Just regular 87 is all you technically need. I like the contrast between the front and the back of the Tremor. We've got black painted tow hooks back here versus our orange painted ones in the front. It would be kind of cool if they painted these ones orange, I think. It would just kind of like pop that bit more. But one cool thing is that these black tow hooks go nicely with our black painted tips. So our exhaust tips on both sides are painted black as well. It looks pretty dang sharp. But we've got a reverse sensing system, LED tail lamps, and then very similar to the front end, we do have our black Ford logo right along the very back. A few base highlights to point out, backup camera, as well as our zone lighting back there. We also do have our four seven pin provisions. So if you've got a trailer that demands it, it is there. And then as always, we've got our spare tire located just underneath the truck. Towing numbers for the F-150 are literally all over the place. So it's going to depend on how you have the truck configured, how much payload you have in the vehicle. Like there are so many things you have to consider there. So if you're not really sure how you should have this thing configured based off of your payload and towing needs, check down in the description of the video. I have put together a comprehensive video explaining different configurations, payload numbers, and I give you some real world examples on top of that. But one cool thing that I love about the tailgate Easy enough to drop down that way, but we also do have a power release as an option. I like the tailgate design that came for the F-150 in the 21 model. We've got all of our measurement units along the side, which is super useful. We've got our clamps there as well. So if you are gonna be clamping down to cut wood, you've got that flexibility. This one also has the tailgate step. So getting in and out of the truck, really straightforward. Now, one thing is that you can't just add in the tailgate step. So it's actually physically built in. So if you are looking at getting a tailgate step after market, you just have to replace the entire tailgate itself. So it's not impossible. It's tricky to find these things, but you'd have to look at like ordering one from the factory or from your dealer. You probably have to go to a junkyard in order to find an F-150 that's been wrecked that has this step. Not impossible to find them. Like I said, they're just slightly tricky to find but this one here is completely naked, fully naked. Now we do have the option for drop in or spray in bed liners right from the factory. But if you're considering getting the spray in, I just recommend going through Linex aftermarket. It's about twice as thick as the factory liner and it also has a lifetime warranty. So it definitely has that going for it. But I mean, spacing wise inside of this, this is pretty nice. Now this is the five and a half foot box. And the F-150 in general is going to have the option for the five and a half, six and a half, or the eight foot box, depending on the rest of the configuration of your truck. But spacing wise is good. 
We've got the option for different tonneau covers. So there's soft rolling, hard rolling, soft top, hard top, trifold, soft folds. So many options that are available there. And that's where working with a Ford dealership really comes into play. So if you are looking at ordering an F-150, you want to chat with either Formula Ford in Pickering or Yorkdale Ford in Toronto. Incredible dealerships that I work with, they'll be able to help you out with any Ford or Lincoln vehicle. It's kind of nice. But some basic highlights along the back end here. Nothing along the right side. Along the left side, we do have a 400 watt plug back here. We do have bed lighting. And then we also do have a little box cam right on the very top, which is kind of cool. It is pretty useful if you want to see what's going on behind you there. But one really useful thing is that when we get the power tailgate inside of the F-150, if we've got hands full of things, we could also just... I love that feature. <laughs> I just want to like keep on playing with that feature over and over again. It's really neat. And then just dropping down simply, we could, I mean, technically use the key fob if we wanted to. We could just drop it down that way. But one important thing on top of that is going to be payload and payload numbers for the F-150 all over the place as well. Again, depending on your configuration. So this one, the yellow payload sticker in the door is 1,528 pounds as your maximum payload. But I mean, there are so many things you have to take into consideration there. So how much stuff are you gonna have inside of the bed of the truck? How many people are you gonna have it in the truck? What's the tongue weight of your trailer if you're gonna be pulling something? So every little thing you add onto the truck, the sunroof, the tremor package, if you have just the XLT or the Lariat, you add in the FX4 package, you add in bash plates and things like that, everything is going to subtract from your maximum allowable payload. Ford doesn't have a tool as of yet that's available that kind of shows you a live payload example as you build. But if you want some pretty good ideas, if you look at the max payload numbers in the Ford tow guides, you subtract about 20, 25% roughly there if you start adding features in is gonna give you a pretty good idea of what your max payload is actually going to be. But that video that I recommended you watch earlier also gives you some examples of payload and max towing and things like that based off of different configurations, but straightforward. <laughs> Such a cool feature. The inside of the F-150 Dremor is really, really nice. Like, I love all of the little highlights, like along the driver's side, we've got this nice orange highlight, follows all the way throughout the dash, throughout the driver's side with the stitching. That same stitching follows through the steering wheel, the seat, and even through the armrest. It looks really, really sharp. I love these seats though. These are nice. Now I did mention, so the F-150 Tremor Unfortunately, the 400A package was discontinued for the 23 model year. So we've got the 401, which will be a cloth seat. And then we've got the 402, which is going to be a leather seat. And like I said, the seat itself, super comfortable, really, really nice. And one thing that I love, so the seats themselves, when we look at the 402A, going to be fully power adjustable. So we can go forwards, backwards, up and down with the thing. We've got two-way lumbar support. And then one nice thing is that we also do have a headrest that you heard that clicking there so we can adjust it just based off of a comfortable neck and head position for ourselves, which nice. But one really cool thing about the F-150 Tremor is that when we look at some of the feature sets, it's very, very close to the Lariat in the sense that we've got the option for heated and ventilated first row seats, as well as heated second row seats when we get the 402A high package, like what we're looking at here. And this one has some other niceties and things like that that are included, so let's dive in. Along the driver's side, because we've got our power seats, we also do have our seat memory buttons there. So three individual profiles. We've got all of our side view mirror controls, power folding side view mirrors available there as well basic window buttons and then we've got a boatload of door storage and this one also is the upgraded 18 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system and it sounds really really good which I'll listen, let you listen to in just a second but it's nice by our left knee we've got a boatload of different buttons as well so we've got two in order to turn on the lighting for the outside of the, on the, on the side view mirrors. So we've got little zone lighting there. We can control all of our zone lighting right through the Sync 4 media screen, but we've at least got buttons to turn on that side lighting for our side view mirrors. 
We've got a button for our bed so we can lower our tailgate there as well. We've got our bed lighting we can turn on or off. Series of different selectable switches for our lights. I honestly always just recommend keeping it in the auto setting. Easiest way to go. From there we've got two other buttons and that's going to be in order to increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen. From there we also do have our parking brake and then there is the option for power adjustable pedals. Power adjustable pedals will depend on which model of the vehicle that you're in but they're really nice like especially if you're vertically challenged <laughs> you do have the flexibility of pulling those pedals in a little bit to make it that little bit more comfortable for you. But I mean so hold on the seat itself is going down even more but so with me being six feet tall I've got what's that like five plus inches of head space like five six inches of head space there so you know you're six six you'll probably comfortably be able to sit inside of this truck no problems but I mean the way that I would typically have the seat set up nice and comfortable still gives me like three plus inches of head space the way that I would typically have this thing set up and like I said the, the seat comfortability is there now, one thing the Tremor won't have is the option for massage chair first row. You will find that in some of the higher versions of the F-150, but it's just not going to be available in the Tremor whatsoever. Now, the steering wheel inside of this thing also is going to be heated, and it's power adjustable. And one cool thing is that we can set up our steering wheel the way that we'd like it to, our seat the way that we want it to, and our side view mirror the way that we want it. And then all we do is just press and hold either one, two, or three, and that's going to let us set up our own personal profile. So it's useful because if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, you can remember your own personal settings, which is great. Stick on our left side. Well, the only stick that we've got is going to be for our windshield wipers and for our high beams and turn signals, all that fun stuff. We've also got a series of different buttons along the left pad of the steering wheel. And that's going to be for well, a few things. So we've got buttons for our adaptive cruise control system. So our set it and forget it cruise. If you wanna walk through and how that works, check down in the description of the video but we've got our volume rocker and we also have a voice command prompt to do things like change songs, radio stations. We can navigate using our voice as well. Along the right hand side, we've got a series of other buttons in order to control what's going on through our cluster screen. Uh, if you want to walk through on how to use the cluster screen or even the sync for media screen, check down in the description of the video. I put together some crazy comprehensive videos explaining how everything works, but we can also answer or hang up on a phone call. We can change songs, radio stations, and things like that. So it's pretty straightforward. Along the bottom part of the steering wheel, we've got this nice aluminum cutout as well. It looks nice and it feels nice all at the same time. I like it. Shooting over, we are going to be push button start inside of the vehicle. We can turn ourselves into accessory mode if we want to or press the brake and push, uh, push the start stop button in order to fire the engine up. Uh, actually, let's we'll start up there. So I wanna go through a few other things here as well. I mean, the startup animations inside of this are great. I love the one inside of the Sync 4 media screen. It looks nice. Celebrating 75 years of F-150, 48 to 23. So crazy. So crazy. I love it. All right, so some basics here. Just looking at the very top of the media screen, we've got a little button there, and that's going to be for our 360 camera. So we've got the option for the 360 camera in a lot of models of the F-150, but we've got a few different views. So we've got our 360 view, our front partial view, front 180 degree view, our bed view. There is also the option for an added camera. So you can put that on a trailer essentially to see what's going on behind you. Really, really useful setting. There's a hitch view. So as we're backing the truck up, we can see if we're lining ourselves up properly in order to be able to mount. And then we've also got our full backup camera there as well. So it is nice we can kind of adjust as we go in order to figure out which camera we want to jump in between. We've got our reverse sensing system, so that beeping that we get as we back up, that drives you nuts. You can turn it off. Four-way blinkers. We've also got our traction control system, and then, our, and then we've also got our trail control on top of that. One other cool feature that this has, it actually is going to be found inside of the full-size Bronco, and that's going to be our trail turn assist. So it's in our feature screen inside of the Sync 4 screen. But what that's going to do is it's going to lock up the innermost rear tire. So where that comes in handy is, let's say you're getting around tight trails, you give it a bit of gas and you like flip the wheel as hard as you can, it's gonna lock up that rear wheel in order to be able to almost like pivot you almost like instantly. Like it's amazing the way that that system works. So really, really useful if your plan is to take this thing off road. 
and I'm assuming you got the Tremor because you want to take it off-road. That's the whole idea of the Tremor. It's more of like an off-road capable F-150. Like you've got the FX4 package, which is good, but the Tremor is just like a step above in comparison. But some other buttons you're gonna find, Pro Trailer Backup Assist. So if you suck at counter steering the steering wheel yourself, you could just turn this knob the way that you want the trailer to go and it's automatically gonna counter steer for you. Really straightforward to use. We've got our integrated brake controller. And then because we're in the Tremor, we're four by four. But one cool thing is that it also borrows something from the Lariat and that's gonna be our four auto setting. So we've got our two high, four high, four low and four auto. But just like some basics of how the system works, two high is where you wanna be in the majority of the time. Four high is if you're looking at snowy conditions, icy conditions, if you're going over some basic rocks and things like that, you need that added traction. Four low is if you're doing more like aggressive rock crawling, you're pulling a boat out of water, you're doing heavy towing, things like that. And then our four auto is useful in the winter time if you're going always, if you're always going between like icy conditions, snowy conditions, dry road and things like that, because the vehicle is essentially going to determine what mode we should be in. Inside of that, the four selectors there, we also have a series of selectable drive modes. And I love, because we've got a digital cluster, I, like, I love the way that the animations look. And like each animation, so each mode is essentially going to make the screen look slightly different. And then as you move between different modes, it might shoot you into four low, four high, four auto, whatever the case may be. Well, the one that I really love though, is going to be sport mode. It's just gonna rev up your RPMs a little bit more, give you an infinitely sportier performance in comparison. But overall, really, really nice. And like this Sync 4 media screen is also really impressive. Like I love it when Ford opened it up, um, well, they introduced it, I should say, a couple of years ago. I was like, yes, it's about time. And one really cool thing is that Ford also pushed out an over-the-year update recently. So you now have full screen, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. But basics here, we've got a series of different sources. So AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth. You could obviously hook up your phone. So just over Bluetooth if you wanted to, in order to make phone calls, listen to music and things like that. Uh, but one cool thing is that we also have the flexibility of going through wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So you've got factory navigation inside of this thing, which is great. And I mean, the factory nav, super responsive, which I love. And like one cool thing inside of the factory nav, we've got breadcrumb capability as well. And it's gonna drop this little dot, think, think like Hansel and Gretel, so you can see where you've been. But we can go full screen with our factory navigation and it's super responsive. But if you prefer to use Google Maps, Apple Maps or Waze, you've got that flexibility. On Apple devices, you're able to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. Inside of Android devices, you're strictly looking at Google Maps as of right now. There's like rare cars where I've seen Waze available, but I don't believe it's available in Sync 4 as of yet. Hopefully coming soon. We've got a favorite button down there, so we can press that in order to essentially make the button whatever we'd like it to be. Apps screen, which is gonna give us Android Auto, Apple CarPlay series of different settings that are available inside of this thing as well. So there are some pretty neat ones that are available. Vehicle settings, not so much, but when we get into our features, huge, huge options there, which is great. We can set up personal profiles if we're gonna have multiple people driving this thing. We've got a more advanced forward assistant, so voice assistant as well. So rather than pushing the steering wheel button in order to change songs, radio stations, things like that, we could say, okay, Ford, and if we have it set up, it's going to launch that assistant for us instead. Kind of neat. We've got a features button with driver assistant settings, giving us a boatload of cool options. We can turn our blind spot system on or off, turn off our parking sensors and things like that. We do have a reverse brake assist inside of this thing as well. So as we're backing up, if there's something behind us, it's going to slam on the brakes for us. It's kind of cool. Trail turn assist button is there. We've got our zone lighting button there so we can turn on everything individually. So our front, rear, side lights if we want to. Really useful if you're gonna be working later on at night. We've got our tow and I love the towing section here because it walks through walks you through the process of setting up a trailer and it makes it just like absolute, like it's, it's idiot proof essentially. It's such an easy system to use. And I love it. And if you've got multiple trailers selected, you can select which one you're going through as you go. We've got our trailer sway control and a number of other great features. And then we also have a fully digital, digital owner's manual. So if you're getting some weird messages on the screen, on the cluster, you're not sure what those little things mean, you can jump into your owner's manual here to figure it out. We've also got this like little tray along the side. We can easily move in between on top of that. 
shooting across. So we do have this little button in order to be able to open up some storage on the driver's or the passenger side of the dash. We've got our glove box as well. And then the audio inside of this thing. This is like car shakingly amazing. And like it's halfway, it's literally turned up halfway. The, the, the audio inside of this thing is unbelievable. Like it sounds great, super deep bass, but that's because this one has the upgraded unleashed B&O sound system, which I mean, obviously like it sounds great and it strategically puts speakers all over the place, front and back. So it's just like this really deep audio experience. So if you're an audiophile, you will love the upgraded speaker system inside of this thing. And we've got different speaker options depending on how you have this thing configured. But I mean, you heard there. <laughs> is really, really nice. And we've got dual zone climate control inside of this thing, series of different climate control settings. But one thing that really makes the Tremor stand out, the 402A package, is it does have heated and ventilated first row seats. And I mean, that makes it worth it by, by itself. So inside of the XLT black appearance package, you could get leather seats, but they're just gonna be heated inside of a lariat is typically where we would go to get that heated ventilated option but we also have heated ventilated first row seats when we get the 402a tremor package and i mean amazing i love the heated ventilated option it's really really nice shifting down from that we've got a little tray as well and that's going to show us a wireless charge pad as well as a few usb power points so we've got a usb a and then a usb type c shifting down we do have a few cup holders little storage and then power folding shifter and that's for this and it is our interior work surface area so really really useful if you're going to be spending time working inside your truck if you know you're going to be taking breaks for eating whatever the case may be i just i find it super useful and i like whoever designed this brilliant absolutely brilliant i love this feature inside of the tremor we only have the option for the 40 console 40 setup so we don't have the bench setup whatsoever I actually have a feeling Ford might end up phasing that thing out uh, just because the Lariat got rid of it this year. So uh, I think writing might be on the wall. I think Ford's really trying to streamline their vehicle lineup right now. So I think there's the possibility that the bench seat might be in the chopping block. Mm. So it's not as of yet. You can still get it in the XL and the XLT. It's just that the Tremor, Lariat, etc. you're not going to find that available as an option. But the console is nice. It is lockable. So if you have some valuables in there, you could lock it out very easily. It's the same way with a glove box. But inside this, we've got a little, uh, little storage tray, fully removable, and then a few more USB power points. So another USB, USB-C down there as well. Moving that shifter back up, we've got park reverse neutral drive, and we can drop it into a manual mode. And that's useful because we've got two little buttons along the outside, so plus minus button, and that's gonna let us determine what gear we're in. So super useful. We do have a 10 speed automatic transmission inside of this thing. So it is useful to be able to drop gears and go up and down as necessary there instead. And then shifting up overhead, there's the auto dimming rear view mirror. We've got a series of different light uh, controls for our cabin lights. And then this thing also has the panoramic sunroof. So single button press on the shade opens it up halfway. We can push again to open it up that full way if we want to. So let's do that. And then we've got a series of other buttons here. So one of them, the one that we use in order to close the window, if we push that, that's also going to give us a little bit of a vent instead. Push again, and then we can also easily pop this thing open. Let there be light. But I love it. So single button press opens it up the majority of the way. Secondary button press opens it up that last little bit. But I mean, it just opens things up so, so nicely. It's good. Single button press to close it. And then even closing the shade. So it's the same idea with opening. Single button press is going to close it halfway. Secondary button press is going to close it up the rest of the way there. Or you can just keep on pressing and holding as you go. But single button, uh, dual button press will close it up. From there, we also do have power sliding rear window, which is super useful. But one thing, it's power sliding, but we do have to push it ourselves. Right, so if we don't press and hold it, it's not gonna open or close the full way. So something to think about. 
There is the sunglasses holder, typical Ford styling. And then one thing I also love about the Tremor is that we have our auxiliary switches built right in, which is super useful. So if you're gonna be wiring things up, like different types of lights, you want a grill bar, whatever the case may be, like grill light bar, you've got that as an option. You wanna power up a winch, you can do that as well. So lots of options. And I love that we've got the aux panel right from the factory. In any F-150 though, you could technically add it in aftermarket. It's just built in beautifully when we get it done from the factory. Overhead from there, so we've got our visor that does have the home link system. So if you've got a garage door opener at home, we can program that in. Van a vanity mirror, hello, with built-in lights. There's a little business card holder. And then this thing is gonna extend out to block all of the sun that might be hitting our face, which is great. But I said overall features styling-wise inside of this thing, it's really, really nice. And the, the Tremor is a beautiful truck. Like I love what Ford's done with it overall. We are in the Super Crew configuration, which means this thing is the second row. So let's pop back there and see what's going on. Well, <laughs> so the second row of the F-150, I love it. Like we're in the Super Crew version of the vehicle right now. And I, like the spacing inside of this thing, it's, it's amazing. Like I've got a killer amount of knee space inside of this thing. Hold on. So I've got the driver's seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall. I'm also six feet. I've got a great amount of knee space, great amount of foot space, and up overhead in the second row, I'm at about two, two and a half inches of head space there. And then even the idea of like getting three full-size versions of me in here, I don't think it's impossible. Like we've got me one, we've got me two, and we've got me three. I think it'd be possible. So like getting full three, like three full size versions of me inside this truck. I don't think it would be an issue whatsoever. So it is nice. And like the seats inside of this thing, like even the middle seat, it's actually surprisingly comfortable. Now the middle seat's not as comfortable as the outboard seats, but it still is pretty nice. Now I love all of the highlights, like I said, inside of this truck. And a lot of the ones we saw along the driver's side door follow through to the second row. So we've got that same stitching there, follows all the way throughout the seats. We've got this beautiful tremor badge in the first and the second row as well on these seats, and it looks really sharp. I like it. I like it. Some other key highlights in the second row. We do have pockets in behind the driver as well as the passenger side. So the first row seats in the back there, just in behind the armrest. So we do have a few cup holders here. So it is useful for people back here. We've got cup holders here and bottle holders along the door. It's nice. Shifting down, we do have heated seat buttons and that's gonna be for the outboard seats. So this middle seat, never gonna be heated whatsoever. It's strictly gonna be for the driver passenger side. It still is nice, it's available as an option though. We've got a traditional 12 volt power point, so regular cigarette lighter adapter. There also are a few more power points down here. So we've got USB, USB-C, as well as a traditional wall outlet, so 400 watt. So we wanna plug in like a laptop, power it up. We've got that flexibility, which is great. Some basics along both the driver passenger side. We've got some clothing hooks. There also are lights on both sides there too. It's nice. Now one thing, we do have some cup holders back here. And then I did point out, we've got our power sliding rear window on top of that. But the spacing inside of the second row is great. One thing that you might get, we've got our little tie down cleats here as well. So useful if we need to tie some extra things down in the back of the vehicle, in the bed. Useful, if you're never gonna use it, toss it, sell it, whatever the case may be. Uh, these seats, like I said, super comfortable. I love how they're perforated on the outboard there as well. And it's got this nice like orange highlight throughout. We've got our anchor points and tethers and things like that. So if you've got front facing, rear facing child seats, you're not gonna have an issue inside of this thing whatsoever. So on the driver or on the passenger side, we've got a little latch there so we can pull that in order to be able to show our jack stand as well as our white spigot. So useful there if you ever need to change a tire yourself or if you ever need to fill up using a jerry can. There is also another one on the outside of the seat and I'm gonna have to pop outside for that one. So on the outside of the seat here, we've got this little release. We're just gonna pull that and lift up and we've got our power inverter so the way that the seat looks here is going to depend on the rest of the configuration of the vehicle and obviously we get pro power on board it's going to look slightly different 
And then if we get the full partition lockable storage inside of this, it's also gonna look very different, more so on that side, but I mean, we can easily pop the other side of the seat up there as well. So dropping down and then on the outside here, ugh, lifting up and we've got just our regular floor storage down here. So useful, it's a small amount of storage, but I mean, I personally love the partition lockable storage just because of how much it opens things up. But I mean, whether or not you go the partition lockable route or not, it was gonna be a matter of preference. I just find it super useful. And then one thing, once this thing is locked up, it is locked up. We do have to pull and release in order for it to drop back down again. But overall features, spacing, styling inside of this, really, really nice. And that was a look at the 2023 Ford F-150 Tremor. Beautiful truck, especially with this white because it makes those black and orange highlights pop that tiny little bit more. But what'd you think? If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. I'm more than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. But if you want to see more walk around videos on the Sync 4 media screen, the steering wheel cluster, or any other types of videos, check down in the description of the video. Tons of options you're going to find down there. But if you enjoyed this one, thumbs up, share it with somebody if you think they might find it useful. And until I see you next time, take care. You want to make sure you're maintaining your manufacturer's warranty on top. But when one big, but one big thing, you just want to make sure you're maintaining your manu. Because inside of the XLT, we could get leather seats with one of the available packages. I believe that's the black appearance package. Outside of that, it's strictly cloth. And then outside of that to get...